I don't know if I can describe the feeling in the moment. It's just like a freeing sensation. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain because in the moment you don't really think about it. Being out there with your teammates and like doing something you all collectively love so much and doing something that's bigger than all of you, it's exuding this happiness, not only for yourself, but like your teammates and just feeling this deeper connection. Something that you can't match somewhere else and you can't get anywhere else. So for me, it's not about the glamour. It's not about the money. It's not about living in these crazy places or whatever. It's all about just getting that feeling for as long as I possibly can while my body can still allow me to and just doing something that I genuinely love to do. A lot of it is making sure that they understand that it's not glamorous. You know, it's uh, it, it's a choice that you make that you know is going to be a grind, and you have to love what you do, um, because it's it's not like they're an NBA player who's making millions of dollars. You know, um, in, in fact, like the league minimum for the NWSL is so minimum, you've got to work <laughs> um, to to make ends meet. The, the decision, you know, to play obviously some players they they they've you know had soccer as a part of their life for pretty much their entire life and. I'm guessing they probably can't think of a life without it at this point. I think ever since I was little, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Um, I don't think it really became like a reality until I saw a couple of my teammates go pro. And then I was like, whoa, like I could really do this. So I think I made the decision after my sophomore year. I Freshman year was a little challenging for me. I wasn't really sure like what my future in soccer looked like, but after sophomore year, I just really found my footing and really, really fell in love with soccer again. And so I think that's when I decided that this is something that I would really like to pursue moving forward. It was a very hard decision uh, to decide to go pro. I think I was really back and forth on it throughout the summer, last year a little bit throughout the summer. Um, I had have dealt with injury, and especially this summer, so I was kind of leaning towards not just because I had gone through so much and I was just kind of ready to be done. But then after the season kind of took flight a little bit for me towards the end, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready to give it up. So I kind of just decided one day, and I don't know if it was a one day decision, I can't really remember, or if it was just an ongoing thing, like thinking, huh, I, sh I think I could do this. Thinking about going pro, I, I don't know if there was ever a choice, I was just gonna do it. Yeah, I think for me, after the summer going into my junior year, I was playing in Seattle with Rashida, and we had you know girls from all over the country on our team and a lot of them talked about playing professionally afterward and our team was really talented we had girls from the Pac-12 conference other you know top players in the Big Ten and you know I was realizing like hey this could be something that I could possibly do I mean I went to college to play soccer you know it was it was almost like I was an athlete student which is really sad to say but it was good for me because I got my education because of soccer. So it was a good way for me to get my college degree. But for me, it was never, I was never gonna graduate in four years and then stop and get a real job. Like that was never the case. And I remember going into my advisor being like, you know, I wanna get a degree in something I enjoy and interested in, but I, you know, I, I'm here to play soccer. And I remember him being like, oh my God, <laughs> like, okay, sure. I don't, I don't know that any of them are going into it saying, okay, you know, this is what I want to do for the next 10 years and grind my way to the top. And so if it's, hey, I want to go and I want to get the opportunity and have the experience and we'll see where it goes. This is an opportunity that has opened up for me and I'll never get to be able to do it again. Like what a great way to see the world and do it, travel while doing something that I love. And I'd be willing to go anywhere, try anything really. The ones who know that this is what they, they want to do, if at all possible, we want to put them in a in a position to be able to be done in December. Um, you know, that gives you, I mean, there's so many opportunities at that time of the year that it puts you in a in a position to probably have a, have a little bit more going on at that uh, at that time. That quandary of, well, I want to finish my degree, but if I can't, you know, if I get drafted and I can't join the team, are they going to hold it against me? I mean, ge generally they let you join when you finish school. If you're in a major that's so specific that you can't do it, you're kind of in the position that, that these kids are where, you know, hey, we're not going to be done until until May. So 
those who get drafted, it's a little bit different. You've got to work with that club on what that's, uh, what that's going to look like. Um, for those who are looking at the overseas opportunity, now you're waiting for that summer window. I want to go to PA school and I need to take at least one gap year to get there. So it was like, do I want to push that off another year to be able to play overseas? We often forget a lot of these players are, you know, getting 3.5, 3.7, 4.0 GPAs. They're academic superstars and they can go out into the quote unquote real world and get jobs that pay a lot of money. Um, I definitely remember talking to my parents a lot. Um, my dad had the opportunity to play professional basketball and didn't. Um, and that's kind of one thing that I remember him telling me he regretted not doing. Um, and then obviously my mom, she played soccer and you know, 30 years ago, there wasn't even that opportunity. So when are you ever gonna have an opportunity to go overseas for a couple months or even a year and play a sport that you love and get to see the world in a different view and using like soccer for me as a way to see that? Um, you're never gonna be able to do that again in your life. Uh, in the NWSL, it's, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot because, you know, you have, you know, some teams that evaluate college players very well. I think, you know, if you look at North Carolina Courage, they do an exceptional job or have done an exceptional job of building their team through the draft. Um, you know, other teams, though, they don't really put a high priority on the draft. The last couple of years in NWSL, we saw, because of the contraction of Boston, we saw very few draft draftees in 2018 actually get signed. There just wasn't. There just wasn't space. Just from having seen them play before, you know, they have every possibility or every chance of, you know, making a, uh, I would say lucrative, but I would say, you know, a comfortable career in Europe because uh, I think their skill level is usually higher than some of the players that, get over, that go over there. All three of these, these kids really, truly invested themselves in this program along the way. They stepped up when they had to to make the NCAA tournaments. And I think, you know, that helps out with the seniors as well because their leadership qualities, you know, it, it kind of showcases that. The more successful your team is, the more opportunity you're going to have as an individual. You know, April is, um, April's a rarity. You know, she is super, super talented and still one of the most humble kids that you'll ever come across. I am more of a technical player. I like the speed of the game. But she also really embodied being a playmaker and setting her teammates up for success as well. If you've got a pure goal scorer um, who all you have to do is have somebody who can put her in the right position and draw attention away from, uh, from her and put the ball on her foot uh, in front of the goal. April can do that. If you need April to be somebody who, who scores goals, she can do that too. I'm pretty good at setting up players and setting up myself as I figured out this year a little bit more. She's so quick, both on the ball and off the ball. I like the ball at my foot, I can keep the ball. Between my technical ability and my pace, I feel like I, and my vision of the field, I think those are the three main qualities that I bring. Molly is the kid who, I don't think she gets enough credit uh, for, for everything that she brings to the table. Would describe myself as a good two-way player. I think you're gonna get an attacking mentality out of me. She never gives up. She can attack with the ball at her foot. She can attack without the ball at her foot. I play hard, I'm competitive. I don't ever wanna lose. She is someone that will work box to box. She will defend, but she will also start the attack. She turns more people over than I've ever seen and transitions so super quick out of it. Her transition game is probably better than just about anyone in the country. I'm not a super flashy player. I don't do a lot of moves. I don't really show up in the stats that much. Um, but I'm someone who's gonna give 110% every single day and do it for my teammates and not complain. And Heslin, you know, she's, She's that kid who everything that she does is at the highest possible level. She works harder than anyone I've met in my entire life. Um, when she puts her head down and is running at you, like, you know what's coming. She doesn't take no for an answer. If someone says she's not as good at something, she will make sure that she proves them wrong. Um, she does all the little things right, which I think makes her someone that coaches love to have on their team. I'm a very hardworking player. I'm someone that we'll put in 90 minutes of work. Her distribution, she's somebody who zips the ball 
around. It's not just I'm gonna play it in an area that that person's gonna be able to, to get it. It's you want it on somebody's pinky toe hangnail, she's gonna put it there. She has a rocket of a shot. Uh, she's very technical. She can put a ball on your foot from 30 yards away, which was amazing being on the front line with her. Every time I walk on the field, I will, I refuse to be beaten. I will give every single thing that I have to make sure that our team is set up for success and just give my all so that I can walk off the field knowing that no matter what the result is, I gave every single thing that I had. I kind of think of a lot of Minnesota players the same way. They just, they're extremely hardworking. They, you know, have a great work rate. You think about that, you know, a player is at the top of her game, best in her conference, breaking all these school records, and she still might not, might not be good enough to make an NWSL team. Because keep in mind, we have 333 NCAA Division One programs. So I went to a combine, you know, um, I was in midfield in college. They wanted me as a center back. You know, I just, I didn't show very well. Um, so it didn't make the cut. And the day after the draft, so I didn't get drafted. And the day after I got a message from the coaches at the Chicago Red Stars saying that they wanted to invite me to training camp. So that was kind of like a huge sigh of relief because I really didn't know what I was going to do after the draft, you know, not being selected. And then after that, it was, it was a no-brainer for me. I, you know, it was a great way to travel and, and play at a high level still. So I left school and I went and played with Sky Blue. Um, and then I came back and I was just like, I'm going to go abroad. And I had um, an agent and I, I had... I don't really remember it being much of a choice as just something I was going to do. Um, I had a friend, actually I grew up playing with, she was playing in Norway and she was like, hey, we need a midfielder, you want to come? I think I packed my stuff within five days and, and like left. Um, I finished my fall semester after I came back to school to finish school and then went off to Germany and there I stayed. A lot of it's not just, you know, how good of a player this is, it's where they go, you know, what's the best fit for that player? Do you want to find whatever the best opportunity is for you? And what does that mean for you? So I made it through the first round of the training camp cut, and then they brought me with the team to Portland. So I got to go out to Portland for our three-game tournament out there. Um, and then to have you know sit down with the coaching staff um, and find out that I wasn't going to be receiving a contract, but they wanted me to stay with the team and train. I didn't love my experience here at... Um, in the league in the U.S. Not to say, you know, I played with some really fantastic players, um, Tobin Heath, Heather O'Reilly. I just, um, it was only six months of the year. I knew I wanted to try something else. I mean, there was, there was the experience, like I wanted to live abroad and I wanted to see what that was like, but also playing soccer. Do you want to go to the highest level team that you can and maybe not play as much if at all and have to really really grind for a while to get your opportunity on the field kind of from there it was like obviously a disappointment not to be made to that first team um but then it was kind of up to me or do you want to go to the highest level that you can where you know you're going to be somebody who's going to be on the field like there's so many different things to take into account that's kind of when i came to the realization that you know i i'm, I'm playing professional soccer because i i want to keep playing i i do it because i love it not necessarily because i have i had this aspiration to you know go to the national team or get to some level it was because i loved it and so that's kind of what pushed me over the edge to say, you know what, there's a huge world out there of soccer and, you know, there's a place for me in it. And so that's kind of what had helped me make that decision to go abroad for sure. I think first and second round draft picks are always really useful to the clubs. It's rare, it happens, but it's rare that you get a kind of a third or fourth round pick that really really pop. I think this is a really, really good year to go in because, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of clubs that are going to be missing players for World Cup. There's a talk of roster expansion, which is definitely going to help everybody that comes out for this class. You've got the World Cup, extended World Cup break where they'll they'll need more training players, but you can't rely on that. It's like, that's an opportunity, um, but it's not a guarantee. Like if you get drafted, you're basically trying out. Like they're just a preferred tryout for you, basically. It's the, you have your foot in the door. Now you've got to kick that thing open. And you know, it's it's competitive. Even if you don't get an NWSL deal, you know, get an agent, you know, put together a highlight reel, um, you know, and get yourself out there. After the combine kind of didn't go my way, there was a couple agents there at the combine that I got in touch with 
So I was going to use that venue. And then, you know, I kind of figured, like, I didn't really – I wasn't, a, you know, a high-profile player at that time. I wasn't a national team player. I didn't really need to get an agent. Um, and when she said – like, when she – I remember when she messaged me, I was like, sure. You know, I had no clue what I was getting myself into. But I just felt it's the top league in Norway. I'm going to start there and then build my career from there. <laughs> zero clue about anything. I actually reached out to Kelsey Hood. I mean, I reached out to a couple people. I had no idea what I was getting into, um, going into, going into Germany. Not a clue. You know, I, you know, got in touch with an agent right away after I was, um, you know, told I wasn't going to be on the final roster of the Red Stars. And this opportunity in the Czech Republic came up. They're a Champions League team. I remember when I first went over to Norway, getting there and going to the clubhouse, you know, kind of, you're just ignorant to it. You're thinking, okay, where's the trainer? Where's the equipment room? Where's the, you know, and that doesn't, we didn't have that. I know it's not always glamorous. I think being at a Big Ten school, we take a lot of what we have for granted, like trainers and like all the nice facilities. We're in college, you know, the culture and, you know, lifting one another up and all, all of that is, is such a prevalent part of what we do. You know, at the pro level, people almost want you to fail so that you don't take away opportunities from them. I remember that first game being like, oh my God, there's no way you can play two games a week like this. It was so much faster. And just like you just you couldn't you know you couldn't keep the ball for a second you just had to always know so I think it took me probably a half year to really adjust how much the first the first team that I was on nobody said anything to me I mean the coach just had me on the field so I assumed I was playing well which was great because I didn't really I couldn't understand anything that they were saying I think I think it was Simone that said she only had a couple people that spoke English and I don't think the coach spoke any English so I think I can't even imagine that. And I definitely did do some research about Prague and the Czech Republic because I wasn't sure, you know, what what was there or what it was about. Well, I think our team was the most hated in, in you know, in Norway for sure because we had a whole bunch of cocky Americans coming over thinking they were great. I think they always expect Americans to be very physical, and I think luckily that's something that I definitely have. I think we have kind of a stereotype of European soccer where it's just this gorgeous one-two touch on the ground, playing fast. But I got there and it was it was brutal soccer. It was you know long balls and you know hard tackles. You know the girls over there were tough as nails. You're going to a socialist country. You know you're not supposed to like. You're not supposed to be special, you're not supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to be humble. I mean, you wait until the light turns so that you walk across the street even if there's no cars coming. Because they're just so embedded in them that they, you know, follow the rules every single time. It was always, it was like, well, the coach said we had to do this. I was like, but it doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, and it was also a whole different monster. You got into preseason in January, didn't start playing until April, and then it lasted till November, you know, so one game a week you know sometimes two but i mean it was like you you know it was like the hardest i mean it was like a war every single game i think it is a really difficult transition when you've played a really short season for four years how different it is to be on the field and not understand anything be in the locker room and everybody's joking around and you have no idea what's going on um you kind of just have to be okay with what what the process is and it's a long process to feel a lot of times welcome onto a team and accepted onto a team and i mean that transition from college where everybody's so close-knit and you have your family there and to kind of you know you're going outside of it you know those who are uh who are looking at going overseas you know hey can you connect them to the jenny clarks and the and the kelsey hoods uh to, to give perspective on what that's like for me to being from Minnesota, going to the University of Minnesota. I'm from Woodbury, Minnesota, and went to college at the University of Minnesota, where I lived with teammates my entire life, so I never really was pushed outside of my boundaries. I've only been to Italy with the soccer team on a spring break trip, so I've never even been outside the country. So the thought of if I do get an opportunity, then moving to a new country on my own, where I may not speak the language and not knowing anyone, is terrifying. You know, I haven't lived that that world and so i don't want to speak for uh for other people so getting them in direct contact with some of those those players to uh to share their actual experiences is huge i think i have a pretty good 
mindset going in like if things work out great but if not I kind of have other things in life that I want to do so I think that's helping keep my nerves a little bit at in check um I just have to remind myself to take things like day by day like focus on what I can do now like I can go lift with Corey I can go train on my own or do technical work or something like that and like Focus on the little things because if I don't, it's very daunting. I think it's just the not knowing, like not knowing where you'll end up, not knowing if you will end up somewhere. You might go somewhere and they might not want you. So I think that piece of it, especially because I'm such a planner, I like to know what's going on in my life. And so right now everything is very up in the air. In terms of what's going to happen next, I'm kind of just going with the flow and <laughs> seeing what happens. We are live from the Skyline Ballroom in Chicago, Illinois, just a few minutes away from the 2019 NWS college draft nine teams will be adding some remarkable talent to their rosters today and over 200 athletes have declared for this year's draft in hopes of becoming just one of 36 players who get to join a team heading into this season with the fourth pick in the fourth round of the 2019 nwsl college draft the chicago red star select april bakken from the university of minnesota I mean, I was so surprised. I wasn't really expecting to get drafted. Uh, there were a couple projections that had me kind of lower in the draft, but I still, I didn't really, it didn't cross my mind that I think would get drafted. Um, and later and later into the draft, I was kind of zoning out a little bit, not really expecting my name to be called. I just kind of wanted to see who else was going to get drafted. And then I got a call on my phone from a random number, and I was like, I should probably answer this. And it was one of the coaches from the Red Stars saying, uh, your name's going to be called next. So at least I got a little heads up um, in terms of like paying attention to the TV. But it was a crazy moment. My heart, heart was racing like a million miles an hour waiting for that announcement. So it was really cool, and I couldn't be happier. For me, I think it's just staying sharp, yeah, keeping my soccer touch there. Um, I'll probably practice with the Gophers for uh, throughout the spring since I have a full class load, so I'll be on campus and um, keeping busy with that and just keeping my fitness up and all that. Um, and it, So their season starts in mid-March, but I won't be able to go until after graduation in May. So I think following the team, once they start kind of following the team and keeping in contact will be my biggest things um, before I can get there.